Morning family, welcome to Dave Grasham Ministries. Um, we just want to welcome you into 2019. We just pray that it will be a blessed year, that the hand of God, the grace of God, and the anointing of God will be on you this year. Family, let's just quickly open in prayer. Father God, we just thank you that we can gather here this morning, that the word can be spread, that the Holy Spirit can speak through me, Lord God. I just make known that I don't make um, use of my own human abilities, but I allow the Holy Spirit to speak the word through me, Lord God. I just pray that the word that will be released this morning will fall onto fertile ground and that the seeds will germinate and that the, that the, the, the word will become rhema word in each and every person's life. Lord God, we just pray that this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> now, family, I believe what God wants for us this year is fantastic and wonderful, but it depends on what we're going to put in this year. God wants to bless His people this year. God wants His people to be blessed financially, spiritually, health-wise, uh, 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 that they, they will become um, uh, warriors in his kingdom family I believe that this year what we put in is what we're gonna get out what we put in people as people what time and effort we speak we spend with God this year is gonna flow over into the years to come family there will be an outpouring of his holy outpouring of his glory and the Holy Spirit on our lives, on His people, family. I pray if you allow the Holy Spirit, if you allow God to work in your life, that an outpouring, a revival will take place, family. But however, that depends on us as human beings, us as people. If we allow the Spirit, and if we allow Jesus, and if we allow God to make a change in our life, However, for this to happen, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to happen in our lives, we need to spend more time in the Word. We need to spend more time in prayer. We need to spend more time in praise and worship. Now, if you go back into the Old Testament and you go look at King David, why was David blessed? Because he knew the secret of praise and worship. I believe whatever we put in this year, the time and effort and obedience, the intimate time we spend with Christ will predestine our future. So in other words, whatever time and effort we put in, whatever we help God with in His kingdom, the lifestyle we start living now will spill over into 2020, 21 and year 2020, 2022. I believe we need to choose this year whether we want to be serious with God. Family, we're at that road now where it's basically splitting where we can choose. Are we going to be serious with God? Are we going to be serious with our relationship with Him? Are we going to be serious in our Bible study time with Him? Are we going to be serious in our prayer time with Him? Or are we just going to be the normal go lucky Christian that's sitting on the couch, just goes to church on a Sunday, once in a while open the Word, once in a while pray uh, a bit of prayer life? We need to choose. As the Word says, See first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things. Now what's all these things? That's all the blessings and everything that comes with it. Spiritual blessing, financial blessing, healing in the spirit, healing in your physical body. Um, all that will come, but you need to seek God first. I believe the choice we make this year will affect our future in a significant way. I believe God's got a plan, uh, there's a big plan for the Christians, for His people um, in this year and obviously in the near future. However, we need to choose, do we want to be part of it or do we want to sit on the couch? 
God cannot reveal Himself to you. God cannot um, impart His, ministry, His mysteries to you. If you sit on the couch the whole week watching soapies and you don't spend time in His Word or in, his, in, in prayer with Him. However, for all this to take place, we need to choose. God gave each and every person free choice. So you need to choose. Do I want to get more involved with God? Or do I just want to carry on as I'm carrying on? 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14 If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. I'll read that piece again. If my people which are called by my name, so Christians, you, that's given your life to God, God called you by your name, shall humble themselves. How do you humble yourselves? Well, humbling yourselves before Him is you basically walk in the, in the, in the shopping center and the Holy Spirit puts on your heart to pray for that person. Don't be scared. Humble yourself. Go pray for that person. Doesn't matter who says what in that shopping center. You're humbling yourself so that the word can go out. And pray. Yeah. That pray and seek my face. To seek God's face, you seeking Him. And turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. And will forgive their sins and heal their lands. Wow, that's awesome. So here it tells us if we seek Him first, seek His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will happen. Lamentations 3.40 Let us search and try our ways, then, then turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God into the heavens. Now the second point that I want to touch on is God's got a plan for each and every person. Now family, you can go through the whole Bible. There's no plan for poverty or sickness or bondage for your life. However, if you go read the scriptures, there's a plan for you to prosper, a plan to be healed, a plan to be set free. That is the God we serve. We don't serve a God of poverty or sickness or, or, or bondage or um, rituals or anything like that. We serve a God of love, peace, uh, a God that wants to heal you, a God that wants to bless you, a God that wants to set you free. God wants you to prosper, be healed. He wants you. He wants to see you as a warrior in His kingdom. He wants you to stand out and be the light in the world. Be the light in your area. Be the light in your house. God wants you to walk in divine protection and not get hurt. Now, just that little sentence, there's two meanings to it. Firstly, God wants you to be protected. No attacks from the enemy. However, we've got to walk in line with his word for that to take place he doesn't want you to get hurt what does that mean so it means if you listen to god and if you follow his word you're not going to get hurt because how do you get hurt you get hurt by looking around start sinning and then you get hurt but if you've got your eyes and your focus on god and you walk the path he's got predestined for you you're not going to get hurt God wants to see you make it to heaven God wants to see each and every person make it to heaven now, unfortunately that's not the, uh, that's not happening because you cannot enter the kingdom of God by the good deeds you do or uh, by being a, a, a 
a good citizen. You can't go to heaven because of, no, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Repent all your sins before Him and ask the Holy Spirit to live in you. And then you've got to follow a Christian life style. Then you will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, family, a lot of you will say, oh, but now you're speaking about it. God of love, but um, now you say, um, if I don't do this, then I'm not going to go to heaven. Um, God throws people into hell. How can a God of love send people to hell? Now, family, it's not my God that I serve. He's never ever sent anyone to hell. We, you and me, choose whether we want to go to hell or to heaven. The choice is given to us. Hell was created for the fallen angels, for Satan and his fallen angels. However, you serve God, your uh, 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 reward is eternal life in heaven with Him. If you do not serve God, then obviously you serve the kingdom of uh, the, 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 the Lord of the world, which is Satan. And if you serve Him, your eternal reward will be serving Him in hell with Him. Unfortunately, that's a, I'm going to be very honest with you. It's a fact that is what it is. But you as a person need to choose. Do I serve Jesus Christ, His Father and the Holy Spirit? Or do I serve Satan? And obviously, like I said, everyone was given free choice. So your choice will determine, unfortunately, well, in our fact, fortunately, where we go, unfortunately for the other people where they go. Isaiah 55, 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now listen to this. Listen very carefully, family. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not, I repeat, it shall not, and I'll repeat again, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the things for which I send it. Wow! Now, family, this is, remember, God spoke everything into being with words. God the Father, He created everything just by speaking it. Here God tells us, whatever He says, listen to this, because this is going to, um, the other scriptures is going to fall into this. So, whatever he speaks must happen and it will happen. His words cannot come back to him empty. So, if he tells you, you are healed, then you are healed. You've just got to believe and take it. Because here he says, his words will not come back to him until it's accomplished. Now, God that I serve, His promise for us is prosperity, not poverty. His promise for us is to be healed, not to be poor. His promise for us is to be set free, not in captivity. So if that's the promises He's already spoken, when are we as Christians going to take it, accept it, and start living it? Now Jesus also said to his people, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you would know my Father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Now family, this says this, everything we do, we need to go through Jesus Christ. A lot of, there's a lot of groups out there that pray through someone else, um, which is according to Biblical scriptures is against the scripture. 
Because the only way to pray is if you pray through Jesus Christ. No one comes to the Father except through me. So you can't pray through who and who and ask that person to intercede on your behalf. Because here the word's very clear. You need to pray through Jesus Christ. Everything was done through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ walked on the earth. Jesus Christ had a ministry on the world, on the earth. Jesus Christ walked as man, resisted all temptation, yet he died and he took everything upon him, not on his mother or his uncle or his brother or his sister. Jesus Christ did it. So everything was done by and through Jesus Christ on the cross. He died on the cross. His blood set us free. His sacrifice allowed the old to fall away and for the new covenant to come into effect. His blood gives us the opportunity to pray through Him directly to His Father. Now, Jeremiah falls in line now with um, Isaiah that we just prayed for. And this is what the Lord says. For I know the plans I have for you. The clears, listen, the clears. Now, if we go back to Isaiah 55, 11, uh, So shall my word be set. And so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose. Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. So, Isaiah. God gives us a promise. Whatever I speak will happen. Jeremiah, not Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11. Now he gives us a promise. Or he, he gives us a declaration. This is what I'm speaking over your life. If you choose to accept it. For I know the plans I have for you. The cleanse the Lord. Plans for welfare. And not for evil. To give you a future and hope. Now if God gives you a future, a future and hope, is that going to be a future and hope of poverty, bondage, sickness, mental instability, um, whatever sicknesses is out there, um, is that part of His hope and future? Because no one, nowhere in the Bible does God ever say that is what He wants for you. Nowhere. But I can show you in the Bible where he says he's got a plan for you to be uh, plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. But listen to this. Then you will call me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Ah, there's that word again. Ah, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Yeah, the Lord's telling us, if you look for me, I promise you, you will find me. And when you find me, and you spend time with me, The plans for welfare and hope for your future will be set in place. But we need to do something first, people. We need to spend time with God. We need to spend time in the Word. We need to spend time in our prayer life with God. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your, future, uh, your fortune. 
and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I send you into exile. But it's very important that we listen to the scriptures, family. We need to do something first. We need to get off our backsides. We need to join. The word is very clear. Do not forsake the gathering of the saints, people. Join a church in your area. Why? Now you're going to ask me, why? Because in a church, you can be held accountable for your actions. Well, what are you talking about now, Duncan? Well, if you do something wrong, and you sit, and I've got nothing, please don't misunderstand me, I've got nothing against TVN or God TV. I think it's very great services. We use, uh, obviously, um, YouTube to, 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 to spread the word. Um, that is for people that is in dire need of the, of the word, that at that moment cannot get to a church. I think it's very important. But family, you know what, if there's nothing wrong with you, and... Uh, You've got chores, not even that, that's not even an excuse. If you are able to walk or get to a church, I would suggest, you know what, get off your backside, go to a church. It's for your well-being. Why? Because you can be held accountable for your actions. So, if you do something wrong, your pastor or your leader or your elder can correct you with a word and tell you, um, Jacob, what you just did now is wrong. This is what the scripture says. My brother, I love you, but I need to correct you in a godly manner, but with a scripture. Now, when you're sitting in front of TVN, how can you be held accountable? Because unfortunately, Joyce Myers or TV Jakes or whoever that's giving the message over the phone, uh, over, the, over the television, he can't see you. He doesn't have a relationship with you. So if he doesn't have a relationship with you, family, that's how it works. Once you start having a relationship with a person as a friend or with your wife or when you've got a relationship with a person, that's when you start opening up. That's when you start sharing some secrets with that person. That's when you allow that person into your life. Now, if you don't have a relationship with Joyce Myers over the television. How are you going to allow her to have input in your life? There are instances where it happens. If a, pe if a person's got a teachable spirit and he's at that point where he is in a church, so he can be, but on a Wednesday, for instance, he might listen to a message over the television and he allows that person, oh, you know, Lord, you know what, what that person is saying, it's so true. I've done it wrong. Yes, Lord, I repent. I did. That's, a, that's a very different story. But I can guarantee you 99% of the people that are sitting on their couches watching it, the gospel online don't do that. Family, it's very dangerous. Um, join a church. You, you are just going to grow so much more because you're going to get involved with the people. You're going to watch you in the church. You're going to befriend people. Very important. Have Christian friends. Try and get Christian friends that is stronger than you in your faith level because they will pull you up. If you allow them to, they will pull you up and you will grow and they, they will impart in your life. They will, they will create you. And man, it's, it's just a beautiful thing. Allow that to happen in your life. And family, the last point I want to touch on is the Holy Spirit. Once you've given your life to God, once you've decided, you know what, you want to put more effort into your relationship with God, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Allow the Holy Spirit to teach you. Allow the Spirit to comfort you. But most importantly, allow the Holy Spirit to to discipline you. Now we come back to the accountability thing. If you sit in the church and the pastor is giving a message there and whew, that message is a bit heavier. 
um, I'm taking a bit of offense. Um, if you're taking offense or you, or you feel that you're getting a bit hurt, you know what? There's an old saying that says the truth hurts. So once that happens, I can guarantee you it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. It's the Holy Spirit that's bringing something out in your life. Don't get offended, family. Take a step back. Analyze the message that was given. Work through it. See in your life, why did I take offense to what this pastor said? Is it the truth? Or was it really something offensive? And I guarantee you 99 times, uh, 99 out of 100 times, it's going to be the truth. You just took offense because of the Holy Spirit that's bringing something out. Now, now, oh, uh, no, 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 no. Allow the Holy Spirit to discipline you. Get to a place where you can allow your Christian friend or the pastor or whoever is over you, the elder, uh, the, the disciple, whoever. Allow them. Obviously, it must be scriptural based on it, but allow them to build in your life. Allow them to have input in your life. Allow them to correct you when you are in the wrong. And it's vice versa. So when your friend is in the wrong, be at a place where you can tell him, Hey, my friend, you know what? What you just did, I don't agree with it. And this is the reason why. Because this, this is what the word says. Galatians 5.16 But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh for the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh for these are opposites to each other what this basically says is if you've got you say you're a Christian if you, you, you've got the Holy Spirit living in you you can't live a sinful life Men, when you've got the Holy Spirit in you you can't sit at home while the wife is off doing shopping, watching porn on the TV. Or drinking yourself in a, into a stupor on a Friday or a Saturday evening. If you've got the Holy Spirit in you, that mustn't be part of your life. Being a reborn Christian means you do a 180 degree turn. Yeah, yes Duncan, I had a sinful life. I give my life to Jesus Christ. I turn around, I turn my back on the sin, I focus on Jesus Christ, and I walk that direction. I walk away, I turn my back, it's 180, it's the direct opposite of what I used to be. For the women, also, if you're a Christian, you can't be having a fees with a neighbor while your, while your husband is at work. Or have your little gossip group and drinking tequilas or whatever at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Now family, I'm not saying you mustn't drink. That's a different teaching on its own. But I'm just saying, don't do stuff like that. If you're a Christian, do what Jesus did did. He was the perfect example of the lifestyle we should follow. Now, with a third point, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you, be with you, John 14, 26, Jesus says, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my name, so he's got exactly the same authority Jesus Christ had on earth. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Hello, I just said to you now, Jesus Christ was the, the, the perfect example. So everything he did, he said, he was, he is, the Holy Spirit will confirm with the backing of God. <laughs> How awesome is that? 
It's like mind blowing. But the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things. Now we said, let the Holy Spirit lead you. Allow the Spirit to teach you. Allow the Spirit to comfort you. Allow the Spirit to discipline you. All things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Oh. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Yeah, the Lord says, peace will be with you, but in your heart, if you follow me, you will have the peace I had. Now, go through the whole uh, life of Jesus Christ. What did he have in him? Peace. When the storm was brewing, did he jump up in the boat, ranting and raving, or did he get up with peace in his heart? He just spoke to the weather in authority, but he had peace in his heart. When the people wanted to throw him off the cliff, he had peace in his heart. He had authority, because he just walked past them, but he had peace in his heart. With everything Jesus did, he had peace in his heart. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let, let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Now family, this concludes our message for this morning. Um, I hope it made a bit of sense. I hope someone got a bit of revelation. Um, I pray that you will do the best this year to have a relationship with God, to put Him first in your lives, to allow Him to change you for the better, family. You've got absolutely, absolutely, absolutely nothing to lose. But you've got eternity to gain. If you feel that you've slipped up somewhere, or feel that you would like to rededicate your life, or, you, or you, 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 you've never had a relationship with Jesus and with God, um, you're not sure where, we, where you go after you die, if you're not sure that you're going to go either to heaven or to hell, um, if you are scared or confused, um, um, I invite you to pray with me again. And you know what, even if you're depressed, if you're sick, um, will someone do a prayer for healing for you as well? Um, I would like you to pray with me um, and to ask Jesus for forgiveness for all of your sins. And Lord, let's quickly pray, please. Father God, we come to you this morning, Lord God. We just pray for each and every individual out there that's watching this clip on YouTube, that's feeling sick, depressed, um, poverty in their house, uh, in bondage, Lord God. We just pray and ask the Holy Spirit to go forth to minister to those people, Lord God. If they wanna, if they, if they have that unction in their heart and they believe that they will be healed, that they believe they will be set free, that they believe their finances will be taken care of, that they believe their spiritual lives will be taken care of. Lord God, we just pray and we ask the Holy Spirit to go forth and to minister to those people right now in the name of Jesus. People be set free. People be, he be healed. Uh, 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 um, finances, we command you to, be, to, to come into those people. Um, um, any attacks on their lives, we come against it right now in the name of Jesus. We call it null and void by the blood and by the name of Jesus Christ. As the word says, the word will not go out and it will not come back until it's accomplished. We speak it out over their lives now. Healing, prosperity, growth, all the things from God we speak over their lives right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray with the people that wants to have a relationship with you, that wants to rededicate their lives with you, Lord God. People that want to inherit the kingdom of God, um, we pray with them. Um, family, I invite you, just pray with me. Father God, Lord Jesus, we come before you this morning. 
We just repent all our sins, Lord God. We acknowledge that you are the Lord and Savior. No one comes to the Father but through you. Lord God, we acknowledge that everything was done on the cross by you and by your blood. Everything was accomplished by the blood of Jesus Christ. We pray and we accept that the only way into heaven, the only way to have a relationship with God is by accepting and acknowledging Jesus Christ. Once again, we just acknowledge all our sins before Jesus Christ. And Jesus, we just pray and we ask, wash our sins away with your precious blood. Um, we, all just, we just pray this by the blood and by the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, family, um, Dave Grosha Ministries is entering a, 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 a fantastic year. I believe God is going to bless us. I believe God is going to do, do great things in the ministry. We'll keep you up to date. We'll post it on YouTube, whatever's happening. Um, we want to share it with you. We, we want to involve you. Involve you. Uh, family, Monica, myself, my wife and myself, we just asking you to pray with us to stand in agreement with us we're waiting for finances to be released it's our personal finances so that we can finish our building um, that we can start obviously having our services in our own little building um, and obviously start having a congregation in our minute in our in our building well it's not going to be our building but it's going it's going to be god's building but that is money we want to set aside that my wife and I, we've decided we want to bless the ministry with it. That's going to be our our seed into the ministry family. So we just pray and we all stand with us in agreement um, that this will happen as soon as possible. Hopefully in the next three to four months, everything will be finalized and um, that the finances will be released. Um, just a small um, uh, uh, insight in what we want for the area here in Lambton, Germiston. Um, if you're in the area and you would like to join us and get involved, please do so. Um, we are involved with um, Christian counseling with the school in our area for the kids and for the parents. We um, offer that service for free to our, our local school here in the area. Um, once the building is done, once the finances come in, we want to start a feeding scheme at the school as well as there's a lot of kids that um, come to school hungry. Um, you know, we want to get to a point where we can at least um, feed them during the day here at school. Um, later on, we want to get involved with um, our old age home in our area obviously also a feeding scheme and supporting the people there, the old people, just to go minister to them once a, once a week, spend time with them. Um, we also want to get our hospital ministry up and running just to go pray for people, pray for the staff that's looking after the people in our local uh, government hospital here in Germiston. Um, yeah, family. and. At the end of the day, it's not for us, it's not for our gratification, it's not for us to be on a pedestal, but it's just to further the kingdom of God, to further His word, um, just to go forth with the love of Jesus Christ and serving and blessing people. Um, if you want to get involved, if you want to um, bless us financially, um, get in touch with us via email. Our email is ministries 2 at gmail.com it's day grosha ministries 2 at gmail.com it's one word so it's d-e-i g-r-a-t-i-a ministries 2 at gmail.com pop us an email if you want to invest in it's not our future it's in um, obviously in uh, god's ministry uh, get in contact with us we will um, forward the banking details through to you and you know, be a part of it. Family, I just pray that this year will be a fantastic year for you. Um, put effort into it. My wife and myself, um, we decided this year we want to double our efforts for God this year and you know what? Let the Holy Spirit just lead us and see where He takes us. Family, be blessed by the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.